Welcome to the lab. I'm Drew Collop. In today's lab, we're going to continue our milk identification series using Barfoid's test. This test analyzes monosaccharides. We're going to analyze whether or not there are high monosaccharides in our milk or milk products. Please note, we will be boiling these samples. Oftentimes, disaccharides and even polysaccharides can be broken down by the heating process. As a result, I have positive controls for both glucose, lactose, and starch. Our negative control will be water. I've added in half a mil of each sample into these test tubes. I've then added in one mil of Barfoid's reagent. This reagent contains copper acetate. The boiling of the monosaccharides will open up the rings. This will then reduce the copper acetate into a red colored precipitate. This can be difficult to see, so after we heat and cool, we will add in one mil of phospholipidic solution. This will then turn a dark blue color if the copper oxide precipitate is present in the solution. This will then indicate which solutions have monosaccharides in them. Remember, if I boil too long, disaccharides and sometimes polysaccharides can be broken down into monosaccharides, resulting in a false positive Barfoid's test. As a result, we're only gonna boil or heat our solution for two minutes. Here we have a beaker on a hot plate. Notice I have boiling chips in the bottom. I'm going to take all of my tubes and try to add them in at the same time. Don't add too much water into your beaker when you do this. If you do, when you add the test tubes, the volume will rise and it can overflow. Also, don't drop the test tubes in. They can hit the boiling chips or the bottom of the beaker and they can crack and break. It is important to add these all in at the same time. This is so they are all heated for the same duration of time. For this experiment, we're going to run it for two minutes. Any more than two minutes, I find the disaccharides begin to break down. Let's now watch the heating process to see if we can see any color change. To the right, I've added in a beaker of ice water. When the two minutes is up, it's very important to transfer these test tubes from the heated water into the ice water. If you don't do this, the heat left over in the beaker of boiling water will continue to heat your samples. And at this point, you may get a breakdown of disaccharides into monosaccharides, resulting in a false positive for Barford's test. Boiling chips are very important when heating test tubes in a beaker of water. Without boiling chips, when the water is converted to steam, the bubbles will form between the beaker and the test tube. This may cause the test tube to jump and potentially spill chemical onto yourself or your bench. The boiling chips create a site for the steam bubbles to be produced, protecting your test tubes from hopping inside your beaker. Make sure you add them every time you're boiling test tubes in a beaker. As I stated, the heating is opening up the rings of the monosaccharides. These will then react with the copper acetate found in Barfoid's reagent, creating copper oxide. This is a precipitate that is a reddish color it can be difficult to see. And based on what we can see right now, I can't really tell if anything's happening. Which is why after we cool the reaction, we're going to add in the one mil of phospholipidic reagent. This will react with that precipitate, the copper oxide, and you will see a dramatic color change. When removing a heated beaker from a hot plate, please do not use your bare hand, even if you're wearing gloves please use beaker tongs. I will then transfer each of these test tubes into my ice water bath to stop the reaction. Be careful at your levels. It looks like my levels of ice water are a bit high for this. As you add in the test tubes, it displaces the water, raising the water level. Whenever you see a mistake in my videos, this is an excellent teachable moment. So make sure you have a lower level of water. We will now let this cool for several minutes. Here are our samples. You can see there's a slight color change in some of them. Please write down any observation you have. There should be a precipitate in our positive control for glucose. 
Again, it can be difficult to visualize this, which is why we're going to add in our phospholipidic solution. The precipitate tends to settle on the bottom of the test tube. Perhaps if I hold it to the camera, you can see. Perhaps you can see a reddish precipitate on the bottom. Let's now add our one mil phosphomolybdic solution. We'll add it to the negative control, and as you see, there's no color change. We add it to the positive control, you should see a significant color change. Yes, you can see the copper oxide reacts with the phosphomolybdic to create that dark blue color. Lactose, it did not break down with the heating, nor did the starch. So this will be a true assessment of the monosaccharides in our milk and milk products. Sample number one, followed by sample number two. Sample number three. Sample number four. Sample number five. Sample number six. Sample number seven. Sample number eight. Sample number nine. Sample number 10. Sample number 11. And sample number 12. As you can see, when we added our phosphomolybdic solution, there is a dramatic change in the color of some of the samples, not in others. Please take down all the observations you can, including whether there was a color change and what intensity of color change you did observe. We can look at them more closely. Here's our water sample. Here's our positive control for glucose. Our positive control for lactose. And our positive control for starch. And as you can see, only the glucose reacted, indicating that this is a true test for monosaccharides. Here's close up of sample number one and close up of sample number two. Record down all your observations. Sample number three. And sample number four. Here's close up of sample number five. Sample number six. Sample number seven. Sample number eight. Sample number nine. Sample number 10. Sample number 11. And sample number 12. Hopefully you can see there's quite a bit of variability between the different samples in terms of the intensity of the blue color. Remember, this blue color indicates monosaccharides. Let me just turn these around for you so you can see them more clearly and make your final observations. Again, this was Barford's test, testing for monosaccharides. We have another test we can perform called Benedict's test. This is a test for reducing sugars. In essence, that's what we did here. Remember your redox or oxidation reduction reactions? Oxidation is a loss of electrons and a reduction is a gain of electrons. With Benedict's reagent and heating, you will see monosaccharides, disaccharides, and even polysaccharides broken down into its individual rings. This will then react with the solution and you can quantify approximately the level of carbohydrates in your solution. I'll add a link at the end of this video. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a like and consider subscribing. Until next time.